on this episode, Infinite Loops. <sighs> infinite Loops, man. Oh, man, what else? And also, Infinite Loops. Infinite Loops, man. Oh, man, what else? And also, Infinite Loops. Infinite Loops, man. Oh, man, what else? And also, okay, okay stop it. Infinite Loops, man. Oh, man, what else? Stop it. <laughs> this is fun. So hot. Hi everybody, this is Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. This is the advanced shmup tutorial. It's like 55, maybe 55. That's fine. Um, load a brain edit. So we are working ourselves through um, a system that controls enemy behavior. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a bit slow going because we keep encountering stumbling blocks, but it's good. It's good because it's all of the stuff that we haven't thought about that now we have to think about is good. Um, so we introduced this go to command. Uh, we introduced, um, we expanded the wait command to be able to uh, wait for pixel, um, for pixels traveled and so forth. There was one important thing that I didn't do and I'm kind of shocked that I didn't do it <laughs> because I shouldn't have done it before. Um, and that is like, if you look at our templates of the behaviors that we want to replicate, one important behavior was um, shooting. And we don't, we, we can't shoot right now. It would be nice if you can specify like, ah, now I want uh, to shoot with the enemy. And again, it's not really possible. So let us make, um, make an ability, a command to be able to shoot. Now, the problem here is obviously that uh, we don't have any bullet system right now. So we're just gonna have to do like a little, we're gonna show a little circle when we're shooting and that's gonna be, that's gonna be the extent of the shooting. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely want to do like a placeholder that basically says like, okay, now we're gonna fire. And uh, we're gonna call this F-I-R, F-I-R, uh, the fire command. And that will just basically fire a bullet. Um, what kind of bullet and so forth, we don't know. We don't really know. Uh, we're gonna figure this out later. Um, yeah, we're gonna, um, by the way, this is also gonna be go-to. I want to, the comments to be more descriptive here. The remove robustness. This is uh, this brain check that we did last episode that checks if the brain is healthy, <laughs> if we can continue executing it. And that's something we're gonna need in the final game once the brains are finalized and hopefully bug free. Now, <laughs> Isn't it weird? We created our own programming language and now we also have to program debugging tools for our programming language and make sure that the thing that we program in our programming language doesn't have itself bugs. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, command fire. Uh, and then we're gonna do, yeah, we're gonna go fire. Uh, um, we're gonna um, just execute a command here, fire bull. Um, and uh, par one, we're gonna dump the parameters in here. I, we don't know what kind of parameters there's gonna be. Probably one of the parameters is gonna be like the bullet pattern that we're gonna execute. And then we have still have a second parameter for something. Um, I just want to introduce this and then we're gonna have a function uh, that is essentially function fire bull par, par one par two. To, I don't know what, what this is going to be doing. Um, this fireball function, this is going to be different in our final game. And maybe we're going to later on actually make it so that maybe we can see the bullet patterns here in the, in the editor as well. Um, but for now, I just want to show a circle. Um, uh, hmm, how are we going to do this? Uh, let's make it so that we have, like the way we have enemies, let's make it so that we have... Um, Let's make it like a like a flash, like a muzzle flash, basically on the enemy. Um, let's call it muzz, right? Something like this, muzz. And then we're gonna if we fire the bullet. We're gonna add to the muzz a new muzz, and that is gonna be. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I guess the muzzle flashes are going to be on the enemies. We're gonna they're gonna move with the enemy. So let's let's go do with something like n equals. Uh, yeah, we might also want to specify which enemy we're firing, right? So something like n underscore n. Let's go underscore. So it's different than the name of the parameter. I always feel bad when the 
variable that we assign it to a parameter is the same as the name of the parameter it feels that doesn't feel good um uh, then r is going to be like 10 and then uh age equals one zero or whatever i don't know I, I, i'm not sure what i'm doing here but it seems that seems okay um i just want to make sure that when we're firing when we're doing the fire command that we actually also supply the e as a command so we know which enemy is firing right so uh so yeah this is just the fire bull command yes 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 and then um when we're drawing things we're not going to have a separate update function we're just going to do everything in the draw function i don't care i don't care that much oh yeah there we we draw the up uh, enemies and then we're going to go for m in all muzz do and i'm going to go m dot age plus equal uh one if m dot age is greater than 10 then delete muzz m so that that makes sure that the m's are deleted when they we don't have a kind of have a, as i said we're not going to have an update function for the muzzles we're going to update them as we draw them um it's it's just like a little it's we're probably going to delete this later on anyway temp and then here we're gonna go circ fill uh, e dot x e dot y um, m dot r ten. Um, let me check this real quick. Oh, m dot. Oh yeah, the m dot r. So basically, uh, we're gonna draw at the position of the enemy that the muzzle flash is attached to um we're going to draw a circle of the radius r and then uh, uh yeah on all 10 it, the color is going to be seven that's what i'm thinking um and then we're gonna go if oh okay. wait 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 if m dot n dot and there we go if m dot n there we go that's 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 correct if m dot n if that exists then then we draw it okay that's what i'm thinking let's let's try that let's just see if that works let's introduce a new thing here and let's make it fire yeah it's it's just not at the right position <laughs> let's make it here so now the enemy flies in and then it fires in a bullet uh the circles are too big and and it's it should get smaller i think so um yeah let's let's export this and then we're gonna go like m dot r minus equal one we're gonna st should start with a bigger circle a uh, smaller circle um let's make it start with z uh, with eight we're gonna actually remove the age and we're gonna just make it so that circle appears and if it ever gets down to zero then we're gonna delete it so we don't need the even the, even a simpler system uh let's run this That's all we wanted. Now, we don't see the bullet flying out and so forth, but again, that's something that maybe comes later. Um, and this allows us also maybe to do like a little bit of a, see now also this also does the same thing. Isn't that nice? And because we do the go to, uh, and we're doing a go to, to to command number 10 or the index number 10 and index number 10 now is firing actually. So, by updating this enemy, we automatically updated the other enemy because of the go to command. Ooh, nice. Um, also, maybe sometimes not intentional, so we have to be careful about that. I also wanted to show you something else. Um, so let's put the enemy in the center. 
let's export this real quick. Um, and then, yeah, sure, let's wait, let's wait for nothing. Uh, and then uh, we do a fire. And then we're gonna wait. No, actually, let's wait for five frames. And then we're gonna do a go to three, one. Now the enemy is firing and we can change the uh, firing frequency now, like every 10 frames, every 30 frames. See now, because of the go to command, we can, this is maybe the payoff from the last episode. <laughs> That's why we did the go to command. So we can uh, make the enemy um, do something repeatedly. Uh, there's a bit of a problem here is that, uh, and that's something that we have to deal with later maybe, uh, it would be nice if we can make the enemy do something three times or four times, like a certain amount of times, like a four next loop basically, um, not just like forever, because right now it's just doing something forever and it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit weird. Okay, let's export this and let's get back to, um, to the subject at hand. Okay, so let me see what else we need to do. Okay, so we did animate this. Why did I? We did the change the brain stuff. Okay, that's good. Uh, by the way, something I, I don't like. I want to maybe, do, this is not something we're gonna do this episode. I maybe it's kind of like, okay, so it's looping through this code, but I don't see what is currently happening with the enemy. It would be nice, and maybe we're gonna invest in the whole episodes for this. Again, I'm not sure if this is gonna be this one, probably maybe a future episode. But it would be nice if we're gonna if we could see which line of the of the brain is being executed for the enemy right now, so I could see what is happening. It gives us a bit more of a feel for how um, how the sequence goes through. And it would be nice if to see that kind of like maybe the location of, and the speed of the enemy to kind of be able to debug uh, or to kind of like control, have a better feeling for, for what is happening with the enemy movement as well. Um, yeah, little tweaks. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna think about them as we as we go through this. For now, I wanted to get more functionality in this code. Right. So now we want to do something that is a turnaround. So basically, we want to do um, this thing, this guy. But instead of it flying downwards, I want it to do like whoop and, and go up. And that's obviously not possible right now because we can just change the heading. We can change the angle at which the enemy is moving, but we just like set it, right? We can set it to a different location. Let me, let me just maybe show you real quick. No, we still don't have a function to copy a brain. Let's, let's replicate this, as, uh, re um, recreate it as this, this brain. I'm gonna set, set the heading to, whoa. Okay, scratch that. We need to make sure that the <laughs> that the editor doesn't accidentally do like an infinite loop. So what it did is, <laughs> oh no, when we're doing the do brain stuff, right? Uh, the do brain is is recursive, so it continues doing the stuff. And if we do like a go to inside our brain, then we can just continue going through the brain in one frame, like just continue looping the brain in one frame. If there is no command that will that will wait, right? Like the wait command interrupts stuff. And so if there is no wait in our go to loop, we're just gonna go into an infinite loop. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, hmm, hmm. Isn't that weird, huh? Okay, we're gonna do something like, we're gonna add a second variable called depth. And we're gonna go if um, depth uh, or local depth equals um, depth or one. So kind of like we're checking how much uh, we called ourselves. Um, and then when we uh, are calling ourselves, we do the recursive thing. We're gonna do it with this depth checker. Uh, we're gonna pass this on, uh, plus one. Uh, and then we're gonna go, if depth is greater than 100, then, and then we're gonna do like a message. I'm gonna use the same system here, um, yeah. Uh, infinite loop. If, if we, no, 100 commands is too much. If we have 100 commands, that means that we're probably caught in an infinite loop, uh, something like this. And then we're gonna return. We're gonna we're gonna quit doing this stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, so this is again an additional code that we can remove in the actual game. Um, let's see if this will catch our problem. So this is good. 
uh, we're gonna do a heading here and, yeah, and it gives us an infinite loop problem. Okay, so now when we do a wait again, uh, then we no longer have that problem. <laughs> infinite loops, man. Oh man, what else? Yeah, so again, this depth thing is something, a variable that we pass on to uh, every time we call ourselves and that will get every iteration that we spawn of the same function basically will um, have, gets its own number. And when we realize that we have, we did it 100 times in a row, that means we are probably caught in some kind of loop and then we're gonna, we're gonna cancel this. Again, something, all of this stuff is something that we uh, wrote robustness code and it's something that we can just like snip out when we put it into our into our game um because this is just like something that can as this did now can come up during production like as we're making working out of drains we can accidentally create infinite loops and we don't want then our program to completely crash from that so again heading <laughs> let's let's make the go to go away zero two then we add ASP 0.35. Mine. Again, we're replicating the behavior of the enemy at the beginning. Uh, and then we're gonna wait 48. And then we're gonna fire 0, zero. Um, Let me set this up so we are at position zero when, when this begins. Okay, so now the, the enemy flies in, and now when we want wanted to turn around, then we would do like something like heading, and then uh, it's going to be zero point five um, because the way this works is zero is down, and up is zero point five because the entire entire circle is one. So down is zero, uh, then I think in this direction, or and it's mirrored. I, I think it's, it's is it this direction? I think it's this direction. It's zero point two five and. Uh, and so forth, and 0 0.5, 0 0.75. Um, we might actually, again, we might want to sh maybe show like an arrow uh, denoting in which heading we are currently selected. Or maybe maybe like a heading selector would be also nice if you can like press a button and then like chain, pick an angle with a mouse, that would be maybe nice. But for now, uh, the numbers are, are okay for me. Uh, so, and then, you know, the speed is gonna be 0 0.5. So yeah, this works a bit faster. This works, but this is a bit robotic. And again, we wanted to make it turn around. We want to make it like a swooping motion to turn around. And that's not what is currently happening right now. What we have to do is the way we animate the speed, we also want to animate the heading, the, the angle at which the, 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 the ship is moving, okay? So let's try to do that. Right, so we have ASP here, uh, animating the speed. Let's also animate the heading or, or the direction, right? Let's, let's call it ADR, animate direction. And DRT, DRS. Mm. So A, these, these abbreviations are a bit cryptic, but yeah, uh, this is animation speed uh, target, animation speed speed. This is animation direction target and animation direction speed. Um, and this will work the same way as we can just basically, I mean, we can probably just copy the code. We can probably just copy the code here, right? Let's try this. Uh, if, if a DRT, then ang, we called it, I mean, we're calling it direction here, but if we're calling it angle here, this is a bit, uh, this is a bit, we're not being, I'm, 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 I'm feeling guilty, I'm feeling guilty. Um, okay, honestly, this should be it. We just copy the same code. And if we're copying the same code, maybe it just should be a function. Let's go to brain three. And now instead of the head, let's, let's make it ADR. Nothing happens. Wait, I did, oh, right, 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 right. 
um, we haven't put it in our list of um, possible commands. Um, ADR. So it reverted to, to a wait command. ADR. Did you see that? It, it was a bit sudden. So let, let's, let's make it so. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the, the way this works. Ooh, oh. <laughs> let's, let's make it so heading is um, it's a bit faster. Woo! Actually, we can make ASP as well. We can animate the speed to 0. Point um, let's go. Let's make it go to one. Oh, it's a bit. Uh, the direction animation is a bit too slow. Ooh. Okay. Let's make it go in the different direction. But now we encounter a problem. You will see. <laughs> now it goes in circles. <laughs> um, let's make it go like this. Oh, that's nice. You can make it go multiple circles. Oh, right. It's negative. It's negative. So the problem is that we can make something animate and give it a target and it will never reach a target because right now we're subtracting 0 0.01 from the direction, but our target is actually higher than current direction. So it actually goes negative, keeps going negative forever. That is not ideal. <laughs> not, don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, let's try this. Yes, we might actually add. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking about whether it's worth to do this, but uh, I don't know. Okay, so now you can see that this is um, this is accelerating. Let's make it accelerate slow. Zero point zero five. Let's make it animate slower. Um, let's make the curve a little bit tighter. That's a little bit too tight. The numbers are very sensitive sometimes. And this needs to be a bit faster. And then afterwards, I think, we're gonna wait like 10 frames. And then we're gonna ASP to, uh, so we're gonna then accelerate out. Maybe a bit more than maybe 15. Let's make it 20 frames, whatever. Yeah. And again, it, it would be nice if I could see when the wait is over. Because right now it seems good. Like, it seems like the animation is at the right moment, but I'm not quite sure. It, it would be nice if we could see you know, when a command is being executed. So yeah, you can see now that it shoots the thing. We can maybe even add a little of a weight here, like 10 frames. Yeah, that seems better. So it's it's so the enemy waits a little bit before. Let's make it 20 frames. So it looks looks a bit more cowardly. <laughs> and that's what we want, cowardly enemies. Um, a bit faster. <laughs> and this is fun. This is this is fun to create those, those little animations. It's cool. Maybe the uh, when we animate it to go out, maybe it's it's not going to be quite per not at a perfect angle. Mm, let's make it four or five. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we did the turnaround now. So let's do the shoot on retreat. I kind of like that. Uh, so I'm gonna save this. Um, I'm gonna run. Did I export this? I hope I did export this. No. Yeah, there is a there is a there is an argument we made that maybe we should implement some kind of autosave system. So whenever we do some edits, we just automatically save it because that was that's, that that happened multiple times now. And uh, okay, so uh, let's make it so that we see when when the code is being executed. There's there's multiple ways of doing this. Um, I'm I'm thinking maybe there's like a little variable that um, like a little cursor basically that shows us the execution status. So, exit exec 
y. Let's call it exec y. And it's going to be 0. Exactly. <laughs> it's going to be 0 right now. And then and when we draw things here, uh, this is where we draw the brain. Here's where we draw the objects. Where would we draw the menu? Here's where we draw the menu. And I'm going to go am. I'm going to do like a little line. Line. Uh, to exece to exece plus six and it's going to be like a little red line yeah there it is up up there um should be a position one i want to, this line to be um, before like this mm -hmm. uh, and so now i want to move this line around as the code is being executed uh, maybe that was the wrong color. Let me, let me make it 14. Is that cool? I don't know if 14 is cool. Let's make it 12. Nice blue, very vibrant. And it's not that vibrant. Uh, what about 15? Let's make it make the... I... Mm, this is the most difficult part of this, <laughs> deciding which color. What about 9? What about nice orange? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do like the orange. I think that orange is cool. Okay, so now we just want to change to this variable as the code is being executed. Um, and I want to do this here because I want to do this in the uh, in the refresh brain function where we actually create the different menu items. I want to do this here. I think that's a good idea. Um, so first of all, uh, exece equals minus 16, whatever. And so we set it off screen. Um, and then here's where we where things happening. Um, so we're gonna go if n one. So if there is an enemy, uh, if there's, we're gonna take just take the first enemy in our enemy array, right? And then we're gonna go if. Uh, uh, let's go do like local my n equals n one, right? And then we're gonna go if my n dot uh, brain if that equals uh, cell brain and my n dot uh, bry if that equals i, uh, then in this case, we're gonna set exece, exece equals uh, to whatever we would draw these, um, the menu items for that specific line. Um, that is gonna be ly, right? So we're gonna put exece at ly. Um, uh, uh, and is this enemies? Is it enemies? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, the problem is obviously th th there is a bit of an issue here, and that is, you know, <laughs> the execution is very fast. So uh, you basically always just like uh, see the, this line at the weight because the heading and the ASP, those are things that are just e executed immediately when, uh, when uh, in one frame, you don't see them being executed. And the only, really the only moment where we see the cursor or where that indicates which line is being executed is where we're waiting for something. So that's a bit of a, mm, not, not quite ideal. Also the, the alignment is not quite there. So let, let me fix that real quick. So we would should put it at minus one to make it align with a with a line that we're currently executing, uh, but again that it's not quite it's, it should be like one line up right it's, it feels like it should be one line up, so how about we make it just like minus seven minus eight uh, nine yeah so now you can see that it's waiting until it reaches uh, and it will cross 48 pixels and then it continues with execution now they, we don't see the actual execution again we don't see the 
line by line execution because it happens instantly in one frame. So we don't see the cursor move through the thing. But at least we see you know, what it's waiting for. I think this is cool. Now you can see now here how, how it steps up through the different, different weight positions. And this is valuable, this is valuable insight. You can see you know, when the waiting happens. Okay, so now we did the shoot on a retreat. Um, we didn't quite get the shoot on retreat. We're gonna to have to come back to that one. The next goal is something that we should maybe discuss in the doggy zone. That's right, in the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think there's just like one episode of this still ahead of us and that episode is gonna be all about um, doing a bit more complex patterns. Um, I definitely do want to do the bum rush the bum rush behavior, which is kind of like um, honing uh, towards the, the player, which is not something that we can do right now. It would be nice if we could kind of like um, maybe um, activate some kind of special behavior that we hand code where, you know, the angle of the movement is towards the player. So uh, solving the bum rush problem would be is a kind of interesting challenge if you want to go for it. Give the player some kind of command, give the um, brain some kind of command that says like, ah, now I want your heading to be something that is um, always aligning or is animated towards the player. So that's a that's a cool challenge. Uh, if you're not into the programming of the bum rush thing, then another thing could be also just trying to do the snake. So kind of like doing like a nice little snake patterns that where the enemy maybe snakes from the from the from the from the top and then moves like this kind of like wavy patterns. Something I want you to think about. And I have something special prepared for um, the next episode. We're gonna try some extra spicy command to add a, a lot more power to this brain, to this brain programming language. But uh, let's talk about this in the next episode. For now, I want to give a big thank you, huge shout out. There is people out there who are supporting this show on coffee and this makes me very happy. This, this keeps me going. Thank you so much for your support. And as always, I want to read out some comments this time around. This one is by Smelly Fish Sticks on episode 40. Hey, Smelly Fish Sticks. So they asked, I'm not sure if it's within scope or plan of the tutorial, but um, would you want to add an event handling system? In my game, whenever I need to override animation for my actors, fade in uh, out the palette, do like cutscene stuff, wait for a song to finish fading out, before fading in in the next song, get around my jank state handling and draw from update. I use a function with a timer attached and a funk for the end if, if needed. Um, yeah, man, whew, I don't think, first of all, I don't think so. I don't think I'm gonna need a, um, ha a event handling system simply because I, um, uh, I, we don't probably have any cutscenes. We probably will do everything that we want to ever do with kind of like staging behavior, with like doing sequences of behavior. We're gonna do all of this with our brain system. It already has like a timer function and so forth. Uh, it would be crazy to add another system on top of that. Um, but also event systems, something I had, um, maybe many fish sticks is talking about something else, but um, uh, my familiarity with event systems is something where, where it's like, you have objects and they do something and when they're finished doing something, they issue an event, they broadcast an event. It's like, I'm done. And then other objects can listen to that. And it's like, whenever you hear somebody broadcast the event, <laughs> then you do this, right? Um, so the objects don't know, don't have to know about each other. Instead, like there's like this, I don't know, Twitter timeline, so to speak, where people can like different objects can post to, and then other objects can wait until they see something in the timeline and they like, oh, now it's my time, you know? Um, these kinds of systems, I have two um, situations where I encountered these systems. One is Unity. Unity has this where, um, I mean, there's lots of event systems Unity, but I, I think a good example for that is where the animation system, you can create animations in Unity, load in animations Unity, and then at a certain point in an animation, you can trigger an event and then other objects can react to that event. Uh, another thing that I'm familiar with event systems is um, uh, in action script, action script was flash action script. It was very event focused and you had like mouse events, keyboard events and so forth. Uh, and I wrote my events as well. Like I, I wrote my own events for this. Um, I think events, these types of events that I'm talking about right now, uh, that is really something that, it, it's kind of something that you have to, it's, it's a workaround to kind of like the premise of the object oriented programming to kind of like cheat 
at the object-oriented programming, so to speak, or or maybe it's kind of like a debt that you need to pay in order to uh, to satisfy the requirements of object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming, and object-oriented programming, all the different objects are not supposed to know about each other. They all have to there's like this concept of encapsulation. So each object exists on its own, and it doesn't really know about everything else, or at least it should know as little as possible about other things. So every code can act on its own. And that's fine and good in theory. The problem is obviously then what happens if the objects have to come like work together on something, they have to coordinate, for example, for a cutscene, right? In this case, you have to still do some communications, but you, the objects can't know about each other, right? So you invent like this system where objects can like pass messages back and forth without knowing where the messages really come from. I don't know, it feels like this awkward workaround to solve uh, kind of like a made-up problem. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of objective pro programming, as you can tell, and this is one of the reasons why it feels like these message systems kind of sometimes feel a bit um, over-engineered. But also, sometimes it can be a good thing because, you know, these uh, object-oriented programming thing kind of thing, sometimes it mirrors the way an organization is working on the on the code. So if you have a big team and there's like, say, animators and programmers working on the thing, then it might be fun or it might be useful for an animator to be specify, you know, make, make an animation and specify triggers for things to happen, but they don't have to know about those things. And then the coder can just like, make code that listens to certain events that the animator will will put in their um, in their animation but you know the coder doesn't have to know about what the and how the animation works like it, they just like I'm gonna wait until the animator triggers an event and then here's my code that will react to that event in a way this message system becomes a way for not only for objects in a game to coordinate with each other but also for departments in in a studio to coordinate with each other it kind of really depends on what kind of game you're working on if you really need it if you have like maybe elaborate cutscenes and also it depends on what kind of how you're making this game if there's multiple people uh, collaborating and so forth. Yes, okay, so we're working ourselves through the brain stuff. I think there's just going to be really just one more episode, maybe two. We're going to see about that. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.